Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for Friday, October 21st, 2021. Well, my goodness, we have had quite a week, and it looks like the turmoil continues here this morning. So how about we settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. This has been one of those weeks where you just think, gosh, I wish I'd have just stayed in bed all week. Um, lots of volatility to be dealing with, hops and pops, um, all kinds of false breakouts, all kinds of false moves. And this morning, we're looking at a little bit of pressure here in the market. Uh, where we've been trying to gap up in the morning. Now we're looking at maybe a little bit of pressure to gap down. Let's take a look at our indexes here, see if we can get some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. First off, the diamonds continues to be one of those better charts where we've broken through that downtrend here and we're trying to hold higher lows. Notice that even though we've had all of this seesawing and back and forth, we're trying to hold that little support area in the chart. And this morning, however, we're seeing a little bit of pressure on that as bond yields continue to surge to the upside, hitting some new 14 and 15 year highs on the 10 and two year bonds. And um, we're also seeing the dollar surge higher. So that's creating some pressures here um, in the market this morning. We seem to have almost a tick for tick um, correlation with the dollar right now. So watch this closely. Um, if we were to, uh, if those bears were to gain the upper hand here today, then you could really envision pretty easily that possibility that we would break this support area here and maybe push down into some areas here in the chart. Now that doesn't change a whole lot. We could still, the, the way I've drawn this, um, trend right here, we would still be holding above that um, that downtrend possibly, and we might still have that opportunity to turn this around and come back up. If I were to use this big candle right here as um, you know the gap down in there as an outlier, I could run a trend right up through here, and you can see there might be that little bit of possibility that we could hold in that area that's that's assuming that this were to break um, this morning so just watch that carefully however when we look at our technicals here our technicals certainly aren't improving that 50-day moving average moving down 200 well down through the 500 day moving average we're still really have a lot of struggling going on here and lots of worries about what comes next in this market if we take a look at our spy our spy not quite as strong as you can see we have uh, technically created a lower high here in that chart now some might look at that as well more of a double top uh, and that's all right um, but certainly a bit weaker than what we've seen here in the Dow and as you can notice right here we had a little bit of price support in that area that failed yesterday and so we're We've got a little tiny bit right in here that maybe we can test and hold on to. Um, if I were to draw that downtrend in here in the chart, depends on how you draw that. If you come um, here, let me change that up just a little bit. If we come through this area here in the chart, you can see that we may still have that opportunity to hold some price support in here and bounce off of it. If you happen to draw that trend line, however, up through here, well, then we've got a little bit different picture here in the chart where we could just rally back into that price resistance and still see that lower high uh, play out. If we give up this price support right through here, boy, it really wouldn't be a difficult situation to see where the SPY could pull us down toward those um, those lows in the market, really crushing those hopes that earnings season was going to drive us up out of here and get that relief rally going. If we take a look at our QQQ, 
QQQ is even in a more difficult position than the SPY because we we never broke through that downtrend. Um, we do have a, a lower high in that chart. And if we were to give up this price support in here, um, and we're testing that this morning, if we give that up, then it really is a pretty easy uh, thing to see a retest of market lows here in the NASDAQ. And the, the tech stocks have been struggling here quite a bit. So watch that one closely. QQQ, I think right now is our weakest index and probably the one most vulnerable to dragging um, uh, the indexes back down. And if we take a look at our IBM, or IWM, um, IWM, it's also picked up some weakness here. This has been one of the stronger indexes out there. And the reason I say that is we, we really, we technically ticked through and caught a new uh, um, year low for 2022, but we have held much better than the other indexes. Unfortunately, now we've got the look of a double top in here. And yesterday we saw some weakness breaking a little bit of price support in the chart. So you can see with a bit more weakness, it wouldn't be all that much. Um, trouble to see that we could retest these lows down here because there's really not a whole lot of additional support in there. We could grab some support maybe off of that level right there, but boy, we're really starting to run out of some of those support levels here in um, in some of the indexes. Let's take a look at our VIX. It was interesting yesterday that even as we were sinking, the VIX was pulling back as well. A odd situation to see the VIX falling while while the market falls but that might have been one of the you know we continue to see low volume um, in our indexes so what what i can say right here now is this is bullish for the market um, fear is dropping out a little bit we fell below 30 handles in the vix and we have given up that upside trend unfortunately we still have some price support levels in here that could hold us and with a little bit of fear we're seeing this morning in the market um, it really wouldn't be all that much of a surprise to see this turn and come back up at least for a little bit so watch that close um, our t2122 boy this has just been all over the map here with the volatility the whipsaws that we've seen in the day um, i have to imagine those folks that have been kind of sucked in to hurry up and buy first thing in the morning because the rallies on have really been punished heavily this week with those whipsaws and pullbacks and as you can see we have peaked here for another time uh, pulling back even after yesterday's rally back to the upside. Now remember T2122 doesn't tell us what direction the market's going to go. Um, it just tells us where those pressure points are. And unfortunately, we're just kind of straddling the fence here. We've bounced between you know the high side of this and the low side of this several times this week. And certainly um, leaving the market in a little bit of, um, well, uncertain future here uh, for the market is where everyone is kind of feeling i think if we can find some bullish inspiration here today we certainly have upside opportunity so keep an eye on that if those bulls can be inspired but with so little today in the earnings and economic calendar to really provide that inspiration it also wouldn't be really difficult for us to see that chance that the bears could really be emboldened here. They haven't been able to break resistance levels in the charts, so they could be emboldened and could energize themselves and we could push back down into this bullish reversal zone here in the market. So watch carefully here. Um, we're just not um, resolving some of these issues. Our T2108, um, go t2108 we had a little bit of um, a rise early on in the day um, yesterday and then that kind of pulled right back so we've hooked over but the good news is here in t2108 we really didn't break down notice that we held this price support in here we've we're still holding on this little upside trend so we're doing okay here on t2108 but it, it is looking weak we're not getting that momentum follow through that i think everyone was hoping we would see on earnings 
30% of our stocks holding above the 40 day moving average. It, it's an improvement. It's, it's okay. It's just not great. So watch that downtrend here. If we continue to rise, that'll be an area that I'll be watching for some potential resistance. If we take a look at our T2107, T2107 also pulled back, but once again, we didn't really lose too much um, um, in, in that chart. We continue to hold that little upside trend, albeit we did give up this little bit of area right there, that little bit of support, but not so much that you know we couldn't just bounce right back from it if we can find some bullish inspiration um, in the chart. Hopefulness side, you know, we did break this downtrend. We're trying to hold that area as support. And um, on the not so hopeful side, um, as you can see, the longer trend, we're still struggling with that quite a bit here in the chart. Keep in mind, 25% of the stocks holding above their 200-day moving average. It's a pretty tough situation to just be roaringly bullish on that, despite all the earnings hops and pops that we've seen. Let's take a look, uh, and I'm going to skip over T2101, and the reason I am, guys, is when we take a look here, we continue to suffer from some weakness in volume. We did get a surge right at the end of the day to pick that up, but our volumes have been uh, suspiciously low um, here in the chart. And although they picked up right at the end of the day on the dark pool activity, I'm not sure that's giving us all that good of data here um, with our momentum of the market because we seem to be stalled in momentum for sure. If we take a look at our um, earnings calendar, or excuse me, our economic calendar today, boy, there really isn't a whole lot in here that we can gain inspiration on. But on the good news side of that, there's nothing in here that can really probably give us that bearish inspiration either. And that's what we've been seeing mostly in these economic reports. So we've got a Fed speaker and we got a Baker Hughes rig count today. Um, unless that Fed speaker comes out and, and changes um, the narrative from the Fed, I don't expect a whole lot um, to happen on that. And what we do seem to, to see right now that we can kind of count on, it looks like, is the Fed is sticking to their talking points and the, the aggressively hawkish stance to fight inflation. They seem to be sticking pretty tight to those to that talking point group. So watch watch that if something changes here, but unless it does, I would expect more of the same. If um, we take a look at our earnings calendar today, our earnings calendar is lighter and typically it is on Friday. We get a little bit of a break and um, uh, that's not different for today. I've pulled out a few notables, a whole lot less notables and really not the kind of stocks that are gonna move us dramatically today. Um, AXP um, might be one of the more notables on the day. And as you can see, well, that's a bit of a problem here um, with um, uh, that showing some bearishness here into um, into the open, apparently a miss. And we might see um, stocks like Visa, uh, MasterCard, um, PayPal also suffer some of the knock-on effects of of a miss um, in AXP, so watch that close. Um, HCA, HCA reporting today, that's also looking a little bit lower here on the healthcare side, um, uh, breaking down from resistance levels here in the chart. Um, HBAN um, trying to move higher here this morning. We've got a regional bank trying to bounce up. Quite a little bit of resistance in the chart, as you can see. Um, it's got some work here to do. Um, Schlumberger, SLB reporting today. Um, oil, one thing that we can count on is oil and gas continues to hold up strong, and Schlumberger um, it seems to be pushing higher on its report here this morning, so watch that. Um, SMPL, um, well, I'm not seeing much going on in here. A little bit of a gap up going on here in SMPL, trying to push through uh, to the upside. Now, one of the things that we certainly are seeing is food prices continuing to rise, and that is raising the concerns that we could actually see our inflation numbers increase as those food prices continue to show pressures along with um, those oil and gas figures kind of continuing to raise that um, inflationary pressure. And then last but not least, we're going to hear from Verizon um, 
and Verizon looks like uh, at least first part this morning looks like we're pushing a little bit lower here not much activity in there um, it, it saw it got a little bit of upside relief yesterday after AT&T's report but it looks like it's not going to get that follow through today to the upside let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today but before we do that guys if you can do me this quick favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you can please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be worthy or helpful, if you could also do me that favor and uh, click those thumbs up buttons, leave a brief comment that helps the channel to continue to grow and I do truly appreciate it. I do want to apologize here guys. I've been so busy. Um, uh, my partner being gone, I've been running two trading rooms here this week and so it's, it's made it difficult for me to answer all of those comments in the channel but I'll be back on that case here right away and thank you so much for everyone who does take the time you guys are truly awesome let's take a look at um, some of these stocks setting up and um, remember guys that these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security um, be very very careful in this market and make sure you are following your own trading rules and not not following someone else's trade idea particularly if it doesn't fit your risk tolerance and your rules for trading let's take a look here now a couple things I want to bring up here this morning one one of the things that's been working just really really good for us in right way options this year is credits spread trading and um I've got a uh, I've got a QQQ credit spread um, that will be expiring for a 100% return here today. I've got another one that is like 65% return right now. I tried to catch another one earlier um, this week, did not get filled. I'm a little disappointed on it that I didn't get filled on the trade, but um, we're we're continuing to stay short and one of the things I want to um, pass on to you guys when you're using um, premium collection strategies in a volatile market like this it gives you that opportunity to sit with the trade a little bit longer and deal with that volatility it has been very profitable I've got another spy credit spread on that's over 50% profit right now been making really good money on these spread trades and as this volatility continues you could do the same thing so um, I, I know that I've been talking a lot about the bearish side of the market and and even with the, the big bounce here I stayed short the market and Theta Decay has been proving to be very very profitable um, even with the volatility that we've seen here um, um, in the the price moves so um, stay try to stay with the trend stay with the trend until that trend breaks and what I mean by that and the reason I pick the QQQ um, particularly is we haven't been able to break out of that downtrend so we want to see a higher low come into play and that certainly is possible here in the Nasdaq notice that we could create an inverted head and shoulders pattern but that doesn't mean that the next spike up should be the trade. What, we, what I'm seeing with so many people that I'm working with is they're getting caught up in the fear of missing out and they're rushing in in that pre-market pump up only to be devastated by the end of the day when it pulls back. These are head fakes um, in that chart. What we want to wait for, and we need to be patient and show the discipline for here, is that rally up break that downtrend and then wait wait for that price action to prove that it can actually hold a higher level of support that establishes an upside trend and until that occurs we don't have an upside trend and the price action normally up here will smooth out it will clean up you'll be able to take less risk and you'll have higher probability trades so when I look at these charts stocks like Netflix making that big break if you're not already in Netflix let Netflix settle down don't chase this move don't get caught up in the fear of missing out let this chart settle down consolidate rest and establish an upside trend get through that breakout 
hold that period in here where we rest and consolidate and then look for your entry into trade so even on those bullish charts make sure you see those confirmations where we can move on through to the upside and actually hold a higher low remember we cannot have a technically correct upside trend there is no trend when we just shoot up the trend begins after that first consolidation or pullback and a higher low is held that begins the upside trend so keep an eye on that and what you're always going to find is the highest risk the biggest volatility that you're going to trade is in those bottoms and those topping patterns where we get all these big whipsaws and back and forth all over the place in the market on that uncertainty it's here where we can get the better trade now the same thing is true on the short side when we're looking at these charts showing failure take a look at home depot we made some really great money on home depot here um, not that long ago and i suggested to folks in right way options just um, this week to pick up some um, uh, bearish trades here on um, home depot and you can see those lower high failures when we break down and rally back this is the area we want to start looking for short that's not the area to be chasing long and particularly in a bearish market every time we rally back to resistance be suspicious of that and be looking for that possibility of a short and you can see how profitable this trade would be had you picked up a short position near um, near the resistance in the high and this is another place where you can handle that volatility much easier by using a credit spread and opening up that credit spread well away from price hope that open that up in there so that you can handle that volatility for that push down here in the market so i know when a lot of people are losing money you don't want to hear about somebody that's making money but we've been doing a really uh, bang up job of making some great money here in right way options with these credit spreads and it's been pretty easy to hold them with the volatility of the market so consider consider slowing down maybe a little bit in your trading being a little bit more precise on your support and resistance in the chart because i really hate seeing all the pain that's going on out there in the market and folks losing so much uh, being getting involved in all the emotion of this trade so with that everyone i want to wish you a fantastic fantastic uh, day and a wonderful wonderful weekend hopefully things um, clear up a little bit more tomorrow when we get focused a little bit better here in this market with a direction you guys stay safe have an awesome uh, day and we'll see you right back here bright and early monday morning i wish you all the best